अटेंशन इज एन इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ द मॉडर्न डे कॉन्वोल्यूशनल न्यूरल नेटवर्क एस इट हेल्प द नेटवर्क टू फोकस मोर ऑन द इम्पोर्टेंट फीचर इट इनेंस द फीचर रिप्रेजेंटेशन बाय हाईलाइटिंग द इम्पोर्टेंट फीचर एंड सप्रेसिंग द इेलिवेंट वन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर इंग टू लर्न अबाउट एन अटेंशन मैकेनिज्म कोल्ड स्क्यूज एंड एक्साइटेशन नेटवर्क हेयर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट इट्स वर्किंग एंड द इंट्यूशन बिहाइंड इट वी वुड ऑल्सो डिस्कस द आर्किटेक्चर डिटेल ऑफ द नेटवर्क and finally we are going to implement the squeeze and excitation network in the tensor flow framework before moving forward in the video make sure that you leave a feedback about the video and its quality how it can be improved in the future your feedback would be really important in improving the quality of the video hello friends this is nikhil kumar tomar ai researcher youtuber and a blogger and this is my blog post on the squeeze and excitation network so first see the diagram of the from the original paper on the squeeze and excitation network so here you can see the x and u are basically a four dimensional feature features and first this features is squeezed then a atten a an attention is created which is multiplied with the original feature so that's how it work in short so let's define what is squeeze and excitation network The so squeeze and excitation network is a channel-wise attention mechanism that recalibrate each channel accordingly to create a more robust representation by enhancing the important feature. So first of all, if we do not understand what is channel-wise attention, let me go through this diagram again. So here you can see, let's say this is a convolution layer output. It's a feature and contain n the number of layer. Okay. So what happen is that that when when an image or a feature is given to the convolution layer. It do some operation in it and again give us some give it again a feature and this feature contains some channel. So the convolution operation treat all the channels equally and that is not the case. Not every channel is important. Maybe some channel is important and some channel is not. So that's why we use a channel wise attention mechanism to recalibrate or highlight each channel accordingly. So that's what happening in this di di diagram. We take that feature map. compress it and then create a number or we can say a threshold value between the range of 0 and 1 and we multiply that value with each channel so for every channel there is a different value so let's say there are 10 channel in the feature map so we would have 10 individual value we scales between 0 and 1 and we multiply that value with each channel so why 0 and 1 because we use sigmoid in this architecture in the squeeze and excitation network So you can say zero and base zero and one basically gives you a soft attention um, mechanism because it gives you a probability between zero and one. So if the value is near to one, so you can say the feature is the or the channel is more important. If it is near to zero, you can say it is not that important. Let's say so. Let's say the value of a specific feature is ten. So if you multiply ten with zero point one, so it became one. So the value reduced from ten to one. Okay, so that's how it works. It suppresses the irrelevant features or channels. Okay, so this is basically the intuition behind it. How it work. Next, we gonna move onto the architectural details. So there are basically three operation. First is squeeze, then an excitation part, and finally scaling it. Okay, so this is the a diagram, an architectural diagram which will. He really show you every step or every part of this architecture. So we have the input, which is of the size batch by height by width by channel. This is according to the tensor flow. In pi torus, the channel move in the in the place two, and the height and width move forward. So don't worry about that; it would remain same for every network. So first, we take this uh, this feature map passes through a squeeze operation. It reduces it into a two dimensional representation. Okay, that is b by one by one by c, or we can say b by one b by c. If you remove these, okay, and in the excitation part, you have a what do we say a multi-layer perceptron. Okay, what we do, we first reduce its number of feature, then we again uh, increase the number of features to the same as the c. Okay, if you can see the diagram, and finally we would pass the Output to a sigmoid activation function because what sigmoid do it convert any value, any value in the range of zero and one, and finally we multiply the input that is the feature with that value. 
सो इट हाईलाइट और सप्रेस इज द रीजन अकॉर्डिंगली इट 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 री कैलिब्रेट ई चैनल एंड इफ यू सी द ओवरऑल आर्किटेक्चर इट्स नॉट दैट पैरामीटर हैवी इट्स इजली लाइट इन वेट सो यू कैन इजिली इनकॉर्पोरेट दिस नेटवर्क इन एनी existing convolutional neural ne network and it definitely help okay so this all blog post this complete blog post is about this so you can read this go through it and if you have any question or any confusion okay you can comment it out okay i'll go through your comment and try to answer you or you can follow me on my social media and ask a question there now we will move on to the implementation part of the squeeze and excitation network here we are in our atom text editor and i am using an ubuntu operating system i can show you the configuration and this is about so i'm using it ubuntu 20.4 okay now let's move so first of all we are going to import all the required layers from the tensorflow so we're going to say from tensorflow dot keras dot layers okay then we're going to say First of all, we need to import the global average pooling operation. That is global average pooling 2D. Next, we will import the reshape layer. After that, we need the dense and the input layer. Okay. So these are all the layers which we require. Now we're going to define a function called let's say squeeze and excitation. first of the argument is the input and second is the ratio let's say 8 here so by default we're going to put a value of 8 here now let's say we provide some value here we define it before that what we're going to do we're going to call our main function let's say main and then we're going to define an input layer here let's say some input <laughs> feature and the shape of that feature would be something like let's say so the best side would be automatically added for now let's say height and width let's say 128 by 128 by 32 so this is the dimension it's gonna be like batch size some batch size let's say b after that it would be 128 by 128 by 32 so this is the dimension of this input feature now we're gonna say we're gonna call our this function which we have not implemented yet and we're going to say input we're going to pass this argument here okay so now we have input now we're going to first of all we're going to print its dimensions we're going to say input dot shape inputs okay now let's run it and see okay now you can see the batch size is none then height and width are 128 and number of feature channels so number of filters are 32 so now we're gonna save some information from here okay so we need some information we can say b comma height comma width comma channel and we can say inputs dot shape so we have saved all the all the dimensions all the values from the shape because we're gonna need some values so first of all first step is a squeeze if you remember there are three parts squeeze and squeeze is the first part so we're going to say x equals to that is output of this layer global average pooling and we're going to provide some input inside it so we have passed the input and we get an output x so we're going to print the x now to see what is the change in its shape now let's run it so you can see the shape is converted from none from this shape to this so it's from four dimension to two dimension okay so number of features in this global average pooling is 32 so first step is done that is squeeze operation now we're going to go forward with the excitation so in excitation we have a multi-layer per 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 perceptron so we're going to call our dense layer number of features now would be re reduced by this ratio then activation would be relu and here we're going to say use bias equals to five false. Okay, then we're going to provide the compressed input that is x, the output of global average pooling. And next we also need the same layer, but with some modifications in it. 
this time we're going to say we're going to again increase the number of channel to sig and the activation function would be sigmoid here so the sigmoid would convert every value in the range of 0 and 1 making it a soft attention mechanism and here we're going to say use bias equals to false so this is about the excitation step that is a simple multi-layer perceptron and third step is scaling so in scaling we're going to say x is equals to inputs that is the original input x okay let's continue so now we are done with the scaling operation so we have all the three operations here okay now we're going to return the x here that is the feature uh, which is enhanced with the attention mechanism that is a channel wise attention mechanism so that is all about this so we're going to return y here and we're going to print its shape again to see so we would get a original shape let's run it again okay now you can see some tensorflow messages and we have again the same shape and that is 128 by 128 by 32 so this is all about the implementation part now we're going to use this squeeze and excitation network in the few more videos in the upcoming few more videos how we're going to use it and how much it improves the performance in any classification or segmentation task so i hope you did get some information from this video and if you get then please subscribe the channel like this video and do leave your feedback about the quality of video and how i can improve it and if you have any query comment or want to say anything or any suggestion or anything just leave your comment below thank you have a nice day